Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. Last video I have explained you about the deductions from gross income from salary. So three deductions are there: standard deduction under section 16.1a, and EA deduction under section 16.2, and professional tax deduction under section 16.3. After giving these three deductions, we'll get income from salary. And I have already already explained you about the format of how to compute the income from salary. Now, in this video, I'm going to explain you about provident funds and its treatment from income tax point of view. So, what are the what is provident fund? What are the features of provident fund? And what is what are the different types of provident fund and the tax treatment? These are the things I am going to explain you. Remember, this theory is also very important. Without understanding the provisions, you cannot solve the problem. So have some patience with full concentration. Watch the video till the end. So before explaining about provident fund, take the screenshot of the points. Then I'll explain. Now, provident fund and its treatment. First of all, to promote the social security of employees through savings, the government has framed a provident fund scheme. First of all, the employees will get the salary up to the date of retirement. After retirement, the employees may not get the salary. There will be financial problems for the employees after retirement. So, the government wants to encourage the people. To save some money when they are in service, so as long as the employees are in service, they will get the salary. Out of the salary, they will contribute some amount. They will save some amount for future. So this amount saved, they will get back on retirement, so that there will be there will be no financial problems for employees after retirement. So to bring about social security for the employees, the government has framed a scheme called provident fund scheme. Now the features, the features of the scheme are the employee contributes a fixed percentage to the fund. Fund means provident fund. So the feature every month from the salary a certain percentage will be transferred to the fund. Example, an employee's salary is 50,000 per month. So according to the law, provident fund rule, 10% of his salary will be deducted. So out of 50,000, 5,000 rupees salary will be deducted. Only 45,000 will be paid to the employee. Every month, 55,000 rupees are deducted from salary and this amount will be deposited in the provident fund scheme. That means employee will contribute a certain percentage of salary to the fund. Secondly, the employer may contribute the same amount or higher amount or lower amount according to the agreement. The employer from their own funds, they will also contribute. Suppose I am the, uh, the employee. Every month my salary, from my salary, certain amount is deducted and it will be deposited. The same amount is also contributed by the employer. The same amount is contributed by the employer in my account. So I am having my savings and also employer is also contributing to the fund. Then when the employee retires at the time of retirement, the employee will get the refund from his own contribution for of employer's contribution and interest accrued thereon. <clears throat> so every month certain amount is contributed by the employee the same amount will be contributed by the employer and the, uh, the amount contributed by both will get accumulated on that interest will also be created. At the time of retirement, the whole amount will be received by the employee. So employer's contribution to provident fund. When employer is contributing to PF, it is an income in the hands of the employee because in employee's account, employer is contributing so it is an income unexempted amount is taxable income tax act has given certain amount will be exempted the remaining unexempted amount is taxable under the head salary now employees contribution 
So employee also contributes some amount. This will qualify for deduction under section 80C. It's a, if it is a qualified saving. When employee contributes to provident fund, it is his savings. It is his savings. Now this saving, if it qualifies, then deduction will be given under section 80C called qualified savings. And interest credited in provident fund. Every year interest is credited in the provident fund account. That interest unexempted amount is taxable. Income Tax Act rule has given some provisions that up to so and so percentage it is exempted. Remaining is taxable. So unexempted amount of interest is taxable under the subhead salary. So these are the features of provident fund. Now kinds of provident fund. From income tax point of view, the provident funds are divided into four categories. Statutory provident fund, SPF. Recognized provident fund, RPF. Unrecognized provident fund, URPF. And public provident fund, PPF. So simply we can say SPF, RPF, URPF and PPF. These are the four types of provident fund according to income tax point of view. Now first we will discuss about statutory provident fund. This fund applies to the employees of central government, state government, local authorities, universities or recognized educational institutions. So only for these organizations SPF, statutory provident fund will be applied. Again I repeat, central government employees, state government employees, local body authorities, university employees or recognized educational institution employees. For this type of employees, SPF will apply. Now, what are the provisions? Employer's contribution to SPF is fully exempted from tax. So if an employee is having statutory provident fund, then whatever employer contributes to SPF, that is completely tax free. Example, Mr. X is a government employee. They are having SPF. So every month, the employer contributes 10,000 rupees in SPF of Mr. X. So Mr. X, it is completely tax free because amount contributed by the employer to SPF fully exempted. Now, employee's contribution. When employee contributes to SPF, it is fully qualifies for deduction under section 80C. All these provisions you have to remember while doing the problems in the coming video. These provisions will come. So when this uh, SPF will come, immediately you should say employer's contribution to SPF tax free. Employee's contribution to SPF. It, it qualifies for deduction under section ADC. Interest credited in SPF fully exempted from tax. Whatever interest is credited in statutory provident fund it is completely tax free. So who will have this statutory provident fund? The central government employees, state government employees, local body, universities or recognized educational institutions. These employees SPF. That's it. So these are the provisions you have to remember for the formula. Then re recognized provident fund. It is called RPF. When the provident fund is recognized by the commissioner of income tax. When the commissioner of income tax recognizes a provident fund, it is called RPF. Generally, it is meant for business establishment in public and private sector. Public sector organizations, private sector organization, these are covered by RPF. Now, employer's contribution. The employer's contribution to RPF up to 12% of salary is exempted. When the employer contributes to RPF, up to 12% of salary exempted, excess of 12% of salary is taxable under the head salary. Then employee's contribution. The employee's contribution to RPF fully qualifies for deduction under section 80C, just like the SPF. Employee's contribution to SPF fully qualifies for deduction under section 80C and RPF. Employee's contribution to RPF fully qualifies for deduction under section 80C. 
interest interest credited to rpf if the rate of interest is up to 9.5% it is exempted if the rate of interest credited in rpf is more than 9.5 the excess will be taxable under the head salary so i have explained you the provisions regarding spf regarding rpf now urpf unrecognized provident fund <clears throat> So unrecognized provident fund is that provident fund which is not recognized by the commissioner of income tax, right? And this provident fund may be operated only in the private sector, private establishments, not public sector, only private establishments, they may follow this unrecognized provident fund. Employer's contribution, employer's contribution to URPF is ignored. Ignoring does not mean that it is tax-free. When the employee gets the amount at the time of retirement, it is fully taxable. For example, Mr. X is a private sector employee. He is having URPF. Every month, 10,000 rupees are contributed by employer to URPF in the account of Mr. X. The Income Tax Act says it is not taxable. Employer's contribution to URPF is not taxable. Not taxable does not mean it is tax free. This amount, when he gets the amount at the time of retirement, it is fully taxable. Next, when the employee receives the refund on his retirement, employee's contribution and interest is never is taxable. Employee's contribution. Employee's contribution to URPF is uh, will not qualify for deduction under section ADC whereas M uh, SPF employees contribution to SPF employees contribution to RPF fully qualifies for deduction under section ADC but employees contribution to URPF will not qualify for deduction under section ADC now interest credited interest credited in URPF should be ignored Again, ignoring does not mean that it is tax free. This interest, now it is ignored. But at the time of retirement, when he get back the interest, it will be taxed. It will be taxed. These are the provisions for URPF. Now, last provident fund, PPF. Public provident fund. A provident fund which is open to all. Anybody can open the account in PPF. They will get the, some benefits. So PPF is operated under the Public Provident Fund Act 1968. Under this act, PPF was formed. Now, who, where the PPF account can be opened? The PPF will be operated by SBI, State Bank of India, or its subsidiaries, or authorized nationalized banks. Apart from SBI, some authorized national nationalized banks they may also operate this ppf and apart from that specified branches or post offices even post offices also maintain ppf so anybody can go to post office and open the account of ppf and deposit the amount on ppf he will get some benefits he will get the benefit of tax reduction if the person opens the account in ppf now membership is uh, open for all that is government non-government self-employed professional or businessman anybody whether the person is a government employee non-government employee businessman professional self-employed any type of person can go to the post office or any bank and open the ppf now uh, an employee may join in this fund in addition to the fund operated by the employer there are no restrictions that everybody must have only one provident fund. A person already having the provident fund with the employer, now he can open the account in PPF also. Now, employer's contribution. Generally, employer will not contribute to PPF because it is open. So, employer normally will not contribute. Suppose if employer contributes to PPF, then it is taxable under the head perquisite. It's a perquisite to the employee, right? Next one, employee's contribution. Actual amount contributed fully qualifies for deduction under section ADC. So whatever amount contributed in uh, this PPF will fully qualify 
for deduction under section 80c provided the minimum amount contributed is 500 and the maximum limit of deduction is 150000 minimum 500 maximum 150000 interest interest credited in ppf is fully tax free completely exempted now note an individual's contribution to ppf may be for himself or spouse or on behalf of minor child the amount contributed in ppf may be in the name of the employee or their spouse or the on behalf of minor child all these will qualify for deduction that's it so in this video i have explained you the meaning of the term provident fund and what are the features of provident fund and what are the different types of provident fund in examination a theory question will be written, will be asked like this explain the provisions of statutory provident fund so you should write on statutory provident fund is a fund which is maintained by government employees or non which is maintained by which is uh, i mean implemented in government departments government employees non government uh, sorry state government employees central government employee local authority universities or recognized educational institutions in this case the treatment is employer's contribution to spf fully exempted and the employee's contribution to spf fully qualify for deduction under section 80c interest created in spf fully tax free <coughs> similarly recognized provident fund rpf the rpf is maintained actually our recognized provident fund is a provident fund which is recognized by the commission of income tax and this rpf will be in the private or uh, private or public sector organizations then the treatment employees contribution employers contribution interest there then urpf then what is the employers contribution employees contribution and interest last one ppf all the things i have explained in detail so inshallah we will start the problems on this income from salary in the next video